their game by creating the ranking, and then they start calling the companies. <laughs> and then they, it all works. So the companies will, they'll say to me, wow, 24 hours after I made the uh, whatever ranking, the India one, or I got calls from venture capitalists in countries I've never even heard of. <laughs> you know, that's the whole point. The best capital for you may not be in the same country. The best customer for you may be halfway across the world. The employees that all want to have safe government jobs or work for the financial sector, which is the entire emerging world, they're going to say, wait a minute, look at that company. I want to be in that company. And so talent flows. So our whole model is not just 500 companies. It's that the markets organize around them and help them scale and succeed. And so that's our whole model called visibility economics. So very quickly on this, I want you to meet a few, I hope. So this is the number one company in uh, India called Red Bus. And just to give you a feel for what's happening out there and how exciting it is. So here's the story of, how much, five minutes? Ten. Okay, good. Here's the story of Red Bus. So our gentleman here uh, used to be at uh, Texas Instruments in India doing, you know, engineering, software programming, the thing Indians do. And uh, her and I <laughs> wanted to go home and visit his family on the most important holiday of the whole year called Diwali. So as every Indian does, they leave their job at Texas Instruments, they go down and they queue up to buy a ticket. By the way, in India you can't buy round trip tickets, you go queue up to buy your ticket for one trip, and he waits and he waits and he waits, and he gets to the front line, the ticket's gone. Our man says, now wait a minute, the entire transportation system of India is essentially bus. And I can't buy a ticket in advance, like an airline ticket, or I can't buy a return ticket, or I can't figure out what's the best price, or what the schedule is. You know what our man did? He reorganized the bus industry of India. He digitized the entire transportation bus pattern of India. And anybody can go to redbus.com, in case you're going to India, and you can buy your ticket an hour in advance, a year in advance. And you can pay for it, so you never end up where you can't get home for Diwali. He was trying to solve his own problem. And in the process, he reorganized the entire in bus industry of India. And so, like any transportation model, he gets a small percentage. Well, this is a company that's just going, you know, forget 60% of your growth. This is, you know... The one of the largest countries of the world and mapping their bus system? Brilliant. So I asked him, after you became number one on the India 25, I don't know what the answer is, but tell me what happened within 48 hours so I can understand our own, own model of visibility economics. And if nothing happened, say, nothing happened. If something happened, tell me. So within one to two days of the India 25 announcement, we started receiving emails and calls from investors and journalists. The market starts organizing. We saw an upsurge in the number of quality job applicants. Their problem was they needed really great tech people, but all the great tech people wanted to work for Texas Instruments, not no-name Red Bus. Uh, they had so many job applicants apply that it crashed their system. Now, this is a national bus reservation system. It's not a tiny little website. So many great applicants, it crashed their website. And we were invited to explore ways of implementing our solution in other countries. Malaysia called him the next day and said, oh my god, if you can do that in India, please come to Malaysia. And then the calls kept coming. This is uh, what we call visibility economics. We don't have to be a bank, we don't have to be a government, we don't have to do anything. We have to find what's working, and we have to let the market organize around success. So that's an example of visibility economics. This is Saudi Arabia, where we create the Saudi 100. And uh, we have two lists there, one of companies older than five years and one of companies younger than five years. The younger is being what we call the startup list. And so we keep it totally secret who's number one, who's number two. All you know in this case is that you're one of the startups. But you don't know if you're number 50 or number one. And I knew, and everybody in all the world knew, that the number one company was a woman. And we thought, we're not going to let that out right away because just depending on the mood of the religious police on that particular day, I don't know if I want to spend 
the week in jail. And so we decided to keep this top secret. She didn't even know. And she has a media company that is so exciting. She didn't know. So the countdown begins, number 20, number 15, number 10. She's like, wow, I'm, I could say, I'm sitting next to her because I was a little worried. Now, oh, by the way, I should say, this is in front of an audience of 700 people, and it's being carried live on TV. Okay, there is no way of getting out of a potential problem if one was going to happen. We're going to have to fight our way out of the room. Okay, so she's not number 10, she's not number 5, she's not number 3. And slowly she's going, oh shit. <laughs> I might be number 2. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm number 1. Total silence. And then, because they said her name, so everybody knew it was a woman. And all of a sudden, the room erupts in applause, and the men gave her a standing ovation. And this is her, you can barely see her, looking in shock at a room of mostly 700 men giving her a standing ovation. So my point here is that visibility economics works on many dimensions. So all the women that I was sitting with, I happened to be near a whole group of university women that I was mentoring on something, they're like, I'm going to be that. In one nanosecond, we changed how the men thought about their own country, and all the girls sitting there observing that said, me too. <laughs> and then the government said, well, maybe we should have a program on women entrepreneurs. And the bank said, oh, maybe we should start lending to the women entrepreneurs. And the VC <laughs> said, what? Maybe we start investing. In a nanosecond, you can change everything if you organize around success. And this is one of my favorite moments of all that we have ever done. This is Jordan. We just announced the Jordan 30, which is part of the Arabia 500 uh, 